Have you ever been affected by something that has made you so angry and so mad that you feel driven to take an action? I'm not talking about the argument you had with your partner or telling your children to brush their teeth for the 20th, 20th time that morning. I'm talking about inequalities or injustices. Now that could be racial injustice, health inequality, or gender inequality. Let me share an experience that I was affected by with health inequality and what it eventually led to. Several years ago, my aunt was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, which is the most common form of dementia. And simultaneously, I was working with clients whose parents had been diagnosed with different types of dementias. And we were all fearful because we didn't understand what this group of diseases was. But once I started exploring, researching, I realized how devastating it can be. And not only that, how little we understood of it. So after volunteering as a dementia carer, training under various charities within the UK and abroad, I found massive inequalities. And it often depended where you lived as to what care you had access to. So I had a simple idea. I wanted to build an app to help families that were affected with dementia. Now through this journey, I inadvertently ended up supporting thousands of families with their dementia journey. But this impact, it started off so small with my own family, but it would never have given me the confidence to continue to build something to affect other families had I not been supported by corporations and organizations. So to build my idea into something, I reached out to accelerator programs and to impact clubs. Many of you might be familiar with what accelerator programs do. They are mentor-based programs that provide support and structure to start up businesses. And many of these skills are so essential if you've never done that before. So I was in it, but oh yeah, there's one other thing. They don't really provide funding, which is what all entrepreneurs need. So I was initially supported by London Business School and their impact program. Through, the, through this program, I was exposed to what health and technology could actually do and what social impact it could bring. I was also gifted a remarkable team of MBA students who helped me channel my idea into something tangible. I then got a place on the Deutsche Bank Women in Social Technology program, and this provided advice, structure, and general thought leadership on how to build social impact into your business. And through these journeys, I, I fortuitously developed relationships with academic institutions, and I was so fortunate I got UCL Dementia Research to validate my program. Now, I was one of the lucky ones because I could fund myself. I had come from, a bank, uh, from an investment banking background of 20 years, and I was a broker. You know the type. I'm sure you've seen it on television where people are smashing screens and smashing phones. That was me. Every other word was an expleted, expletive, but that's another story for another day or a book. Um, anyway, back to accelerator programs. Now, when you're part of these programs, you're often placed in front of venture capitalists to try and get funding for your idea. And this is brilliant if you have this million dollar moonshot goal. But I was working in dementia care at the, care at the time and I wasn't interested in that. I wanted to deliver a social impact. So this is my first call to adventure. I want to encourage companies that actually are creating or thinking of creating accelerator programs to actually provide funding for some of their winning entrepreneurs. And I asked, like, and you may be asking actually, where would this funding come from? It's not gonna come out of thin air. Now I've mentored lots of people on social entrepreneurship programs. I've mentored on many accelerator programs. And what I've always found consistently within the programs that I was part of and mentoring in is that the, many of the, much of the funding is given towards video production, editing, and lots of brilliant things 
but they're not really utilized or optimized. And those few th several thousand pounds can have, could have been given to social entrepreneurs to actually build their prototype and test it. And I know this from my own direct experience. I've been working with four teenage girls who, and we've developed a, a prototype for an app to help women affected by domestic violence. And that, to, just to build a prototype, was a few thousand pounds. So I know exactly how far a small amount of money can go. Now, social responsibility is huge at the moment, and it's, we're all be becoming so much more aware of it. And corporations are as well. They're trying to deliver a bigger social good and deliver something of positive impact to the communities and people they serve. And this has also d led to a rise in social intrapreneurship. That's not a mispronunciation, it's social intrapreneurship. It's where, the, it's where someone within an organization actually creates or develops a social impact idea whilst they're working within that organization. Now let me share an example of this. Westpac, a leading, a leading Australian bank, has, uh, many has developed many programs and they really encourage their employees to actually work on things that they're passionate about, things that affect them, things that anger them, and then they, they support that initiative. So one of their employees, Daniel Haycox, he was a marketing executive there, and he had grown up in South Sydney, which wasn't the most diverse of areas, but they'd received a huge population and influx of refugees. So can you imagine the rhetoric if you're in an area which is not really used to diversity, and yet you're now partnered with a huge, a now new community, what, would, what do you think their reaction will be like? It will be very negative. The rhetoric was negative. And it's only once he met displaced refugees did he actually understand their plight. They hadn't chosen to be there, yet they were discriminated against. So he got really angry about that, and he started working within his local community to spread awareness of what that actually meant to be a refugee. And Westpac eventually ended up providing financial literacy courses for all these refugees. And several years on, they still continue to do that. You see this in many companies, even Google UK, the marketing head, he ended up, because he had had experience with offend, young offenders, he then developed a program for young offenders to become entrepreneurs by providing that structure and support for them. Now, many companies working with social entrepreneurs do this with purpose and do this with intention, but many often don't. As we've heard earlier today, there are lots of greenwashing goes on. But working with social entrepreneurs can position a company with such a good reputation and such a good culture. And now, this reputation idea, it's not new, as we all know. Two and a half thousand years ago, Socrates came up with this eternally relevant quote. And he said, the way to a good reputation is to endeavor to be what you wish to appear. Let me say that again. The way to a good reputation is to endeavor to be what you wish to appear. So working with social entrepreneurs actually creates that culture within an organization. And as I mentioned with, with Westpac, that whole team were unable to collaborate in ways they hadn't done so before. And I truly believe, given my experience both within the private and the social sector, that it is large corporations in partnership with entrepreneurs, with governments, that can actually create some sustainable change in our world. Now, if this is resonating, I'd like to invite you to think about what makes you, what makes you mad, what actually creates this feeling in you that makes you want to develop a change. I'll share a catalyst, that were, well, I'll share an experience that was a huge catalyst for me. So when I was eight years old, in my primary school, I was spat on, I was called racist names, I was pushed around, and like many people in that generation, we just got on with it. We didn't realize there was an avenue of discourse. There wasn't anything we could do. We just accepted it. 
we carried on and we moved on. And that's with all type of dis discrimination at that time. You just had a rug and you swept it underneath. Now, 40 years on, almost 40 years on, when my son was eight years old, he was told he could not play a game in a playground because he was not the right religion. Now, do you think that angered me? I went crazy. Internally, my gut instinct was to just be a raging bull and just create madness and create, and I wanted to shout and scream. And I learned several times over that if you're governed by that high emotion, it's not gonna create any change. So I sat with that discomfort and I harnessed it. I developed a diversity inclusion skill set for myself and those I worked with. I started working with the local schools. And now this will soon become a social enterprise, working with organizations across the UK to fight against racial injustice within our education system. So going further, if we look as our children get older, we're looking at GCSE students. 1% of GCSE students studied a book that was written by a person of color. Now that doesn't make sense to me given that 34% of them identify as being a person of color. And I truly believe you can't be what you can't see. So going back to my son, only a few months ago, in, he was on a summer holiday camp at, at a tennis camp, and he was called an effing chocolate. An effing chocolate, using food, why? And I got really enraged. I was like, what, how can this actually happen? Again, I'm, I'm still doing the work. I'm still trying to work with people. I'm still trying to create a different narrative, and I'm using it. I'm using it as a tool to speak to other organizations and them to realize that in this, in this case, there's so much work to be done. So to conclude, I have three asks. Those of you who run companies, please change your culture and encourage social entrepreneurship. And those of you who run accelerator programs or are thinking of running accelerator programs, please fund social entrepreneurs. They will create your social change. And finally, if there's something that you feel is so disgusting or it makes you feel that the world is so unfair, speak up and create a social impact out of it because you cannot amplify silence. So have a think. What problem is there out there that makes you so mad that you wish to become part of the solution? Thank you.